Welcome to ForexTV.com. Today is Tuesday, October 28th. I'm Kathleen Reddington with your New York Forex Market Buzz. The dollar is mixed on the majors, gaining slightly on the euro and gaining on the yen and losing to the pound. And now for a look at the latest headlines from the CP News Desk. U.S. consumer confidence plummeted this month to hit an all-time low of 38 in October. The last all-time low was a 47.3 reading reached in February of 1992. The previous, previous month's headline reading of 56.9 was revised up to 61.4. One year ago, this index stood at 95.2. The S&P U.S. Home Price Index fell in line with expectations in August. It had a decline of 16.60 percent, which extended July's 14.22 percent decline. The Case-Shiller Index has fallen every month since, since peaking in July 2006. The Central Bank of Iceland's board decided today that its policy rate would be raised by six percentage points to 18 percent. The move was geared at boosting the local currency, and the central bank promised a rapid reversal of the rate, the rate hike when inflation begins to fall. And Japanese retail sales fell by 0.4 percent annually in September, below expectations for a flat reading and below August's August 0.7 percent gain. Today, we are joined by Greg Michael Alexi Michalowski of FXDD. Hi, Greg. How are you today? I'm doing fine. Thank you, Kathleen. Now, if you take everything from yesterday and reverse it, it seems that that would be today. The yen fell the most in seven years against the euro after making record highs yesterday, and global stocks seem to be revitalized, even though most of the eurozone countries and Japan had poor consumer confidence or retail sales reports come out. Why the sudden flip, and what is your euro-yen strategy going forward? Uh, well, we're we're going to get these movements in the in the currency markets. Needless to say, uh, the the dollar yen and the euro yen uh, have been sold uh, uh, rather hard of late. And uh, yesterday there was some uh, talk about uh, G7 possibly coming in and intervening in the in the yen uh, uh, currency. Um, and uh, so uh, today, uh, with the with the weaker than expected numbers, uh, what did the market do? The stock market uh, has been rallying or, or rallied after uh, selling off after the the numbers and uh, the weak numbers this morning, and uh, and so we're seeing a, a rebound in dollar yen yen and the euro yen as well. Um, in the in the euro yen uh, in particular, um, and and both the dollar yen, we 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 made it through some key. Uh, what I look at it on an hourly chart, um, uh, a resistance, and that comes in at the 100-hour moving average. Uh, if you look at the dollar-yen chart, uh, that is represented by the, by the blue line in the chart. And uh, we went up and tested it earlier in London session, came off, uh, then got above it just uh, right before the, uh, the horrible uh, U.S. Uh, consumer confidence number of 10, moved a little bit be below it, and now, now has uh, just moved up uh, uh, back above the level on some comments, I guess, from the German officials in regard to the uh, uh, the strength of the yen, um, and so we're seeing a, a rebound in in the yen against the, the dollar, and that that has trans uh, moved over to the euro yen as well. Uh, although the chart I think uh, that you have in regard uh, regard to the euro yen is below the blue line, it has uh, recently, uh, since the time I sent you the chart, moved back above this uh, key resistance level at the 12070 level. That's, again, the 100-hour moving average. I like to look at that as a technical indicator for uh, short-term direction. So this is a, uh, this is a positive uh, uh, development, or at least it, uh, it, it may uh, prompt some uh, short covering in these currency pairs that have been uh, uh, sold off rather aggressively over the last, uh, since, uh, you know, I don't know, a week or so. So uh, uh, just take it for what it's worth, uh, and it's uh, just short, short term in nature as far as I'm concerned, but uh, it is uh, a positive uh, for those currency pairs uh, in the short term. All right, and now the pound also snapped out of its slump against the dollar, coming up for the first time in a week. Is this move all equities based, or was there something else there that was bound to happen eventually? 
Um, I, I, I think it was uh, it, it was uh, six six days of uh, aggressive uh, uh, selling, which moved the uh, pound sterling down from uh, one seventy five uh, sixteen to a low of one fifty two sixty five. Um, uh, and, and so today uh, we had six down days. Today we're sitting around unchanged, a little bit higher on the day, um, and and it seems like it's a it's a great move to the upside uh, for the for the pound sterling, but. Uh, Clearly, uh, the the uh, the UK and the uh, and the euro uh, or currencies are being uh, hit hard um, as the exposure to uh, emerging countries, um, uh, the thought that they're they're, they're behind the curve. Uh, ease aggressively uh, down the road or have, have been weighing on their currency. Uh, nevertheless, I, I picked, looked at a chart going back, I think, to uh, 1992 to 2004 yesterday on a monthly chart, and the uh, uh, the pair had been in between like a range of 140 to 175 over that long period. And uh, at 157-ish is sort of the midpoint of that range, so we're back in the belly of the uh, of the sterling uh, uh, currency uh, uh, rate that uh, prevailed from uh, 1992 to uh, 2004. Um, so uh, I, I think that's a happy level for the uh, sterling at the moment against the dollar, and we'll see uh, uh, how, how the market wants to uh, move forward. But from um, from a technical perspective. Um, again, the 100-hour uh, uh, moving average, which I, I like to look at, comes in at the 158.58 level on the top side. So we are still a ways away from uh, turning the uh, the sentiment to a more uh, bullish uh, uh, bu- bullish scenario, on my, in, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, so, uh, and, and we're sort of in a consolidated, little bit of an uptrend sort of a corrective uh, phase right now but uh until it gets it gets above the 15858 level um I wouldn't be uh, uh overly bullish on the on the currency pair at the moment. Now I don't mean to sound like Jerry Seinfeld but what's the deal with Iceland and why the massive reversal in policy what do they stand to gain? Can you enlighten us a little bit on this move? Yeah, sure. You know, it, it, it's typical when there's a, a run on a currency, or the, there's you know, need, it, it is for countries to raise their rates uh, rather aggressively in order to keep the funds or attract funds into their currency, and uh, that's what they're trying to do. So uh, you'll see, you know, it, it, you'll see a 600. Uh, you know, I guess they moved 600 basis points today, um, and uh, in, in an effort to. Uh, uh, stop the slide and to uh, attract some capital into their their country, which has been uh, hurt uh, uh, rather uh, aggressively by by the over leverage of their uh, uh, their their system. So uh, uh, I don't know if it's going to help, uh, but uh, it, they're they're doing all they can to uh, try to uh, stop the slide at the moment. All right, and finally, the Federal Reserve began their two day meeting today, and they are expected to make a rate cut announcement uh, tomorrow. What do you think will take place? Do you think they'll go with the rate cut? Uh, yes, I think they're going to cut by um, 50 basis points. I, 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 um, you know, there are some who think, well, why, why waste the bullet now? But, um, um, uh, but it, it, with the with the consumer confidence down uh, to such a low level, uh, the, the U.S. Uh, needs at least a positive headline in regard to uh, interest rates. Now, what would be more important uh, for me is to see the LIBOR rates come down continue to come down they're coming down little by little but if we have a cut of 50 basis points i'd like to see a little bit more than a little move in you know four or five basis points 10 you know 15 um it would be nice to get 25 30 basis points and the reason why that's important is it helps the consumers out and it helps businesses out a, uh, a lot of loans are based off of uh, three-month libor rates and other libor rates and as long as they come down that will help stimulate uh um, uh, or help those those uh, consumers and businesses out uh, who are in desperate need of uh, help as uh, as the economy slows and and uh, 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 you know expectations of uh, uh, further weakness ahead uh, prevail. So it's uh, it, it would be um, it may be more symbolic in, in that uh, 
uh, you know, we're not going to see the the effects in, in mortgage rates or other lend, uh, lending rates as much as the 50 basis points, but it, uh, it it will help out a little bit. Plus, it also helps out the banks who uh, um, who are seem to be getting a lot of the uh, attention as far as help goes. But we need a, we need a sound financial uh, uh, institutions uh, in order to uh, get the economic engine going again. Uh, we're still in dicey times here, uh, Kathleen, and uh, um, it's still going to be day to day and. And uh, the stock markets are still going to be under pressure uh, overall in, in the long term. But uh, there will be times for corrections along the way, and, and this may be the start of uh, some sort of correct, uh, corrective phase for um, uh, stocks and for currencies as well uh, in, in some of the trends that we've been seeing. Sounds good to me, Greg. Thanks for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. This has been your New York Forex Market Buzz with Greg Michalowski of FXDD. I'm Kathleen Reddington. Join us later this afternoon for PM Exchange right here on ForexTV.com.